And look, you just need like one real wild card on the roster. I think that's part of what makes Ricky a little bit intriguing. Like he might end up not playing all that much, only spot minutes. We talked about that yesterday. He might end up popping and making a huge growth in his in his second year and coming out here and really playing a meaningful role. Yabusele is sort of like that too. Like he might come over and the shot might not translate and maybe things don't work out and yada, yada, yada. That's fine. It was a minimum contract. Or he might really, you know, the shot might translate. He can be a you know versatile defender. Gives you more than you were expecting. Uh, those wild cards, like it's one thing to have someone, uh, you know, that has a little higher of a floor. But it's another thing to just have a little bit of excitement and uncertainty. And I think he brings that in a good way. Yeah, because like, look, a lot of these guys on the roster are just, they're household names to some extent, right? Like, I mean, Kyle Lowry, he's very old. We know what we're getting out of him. Reggie Jackson, been around a long time. Caleb Martin, Kelly Uber, a lot of like, I mean, Kelly is a wild card in some ways, but a more known quantity, certainly. And after getting him for a full season here with Joel Embiid under Nick Nurse next to Tyrese Maxey, there's not a lot of guesswork with what his game will look like. It'll be a version of the Kelly we saw last year and in years prior. Yeah, Buscelli is a, a lot more of a wild card. And, you know, he's enough of one that, reactions have been all over the place from well he's just the 14th guy to he signs and people are like well he should he start like he's a power forward he's the only one they've really got and you know i said it at the time last week or two weeks ago whenever it was as much as i want to say no like that's just unreasonable i was saying that kind of stuff with kelly Oubre last year going into the season like yeah he's here on a minimum he got signed super late don't put high expectations on him and I'm still saying don't put high expectations on Yabu Sally, but because there is such a dearth in, of players like him on the roster, I don't necessarily want to put a ceiling on him yet. So I, I think that makes, as we try to, we're going to dive deeper into, as we get closer to the year, some of these important preseason battles and roster battles and, hey, who might be, you know, seventh man, eighth man, like the the guys who are firmly in the rotation and who's going to win the the bench athlete role. Like we, we talked about Ricky a lot yesterday. We've mentioned KJ Martin, like Yabusele, different player, but in a, you know, a sort of a small group of those guys competing for similar roles, similar minutes. And so those guys are going to come out in late September, early October on a mission to make a statement right away. And so you brought up Yabuselli's conditioning. I think that it demands that all these guys are going to have to come into camp ready to go. And, and that that's good for everyone. Everyone's going to be, you know, this last month or so before training camp, which we are only a month away from media day, by the way, as of today. These guys have to be in the gym trying to get better, working on their bodies, going on runs, doing their cardio, getting in the pool, whatever it might be. I actually am interested to see – does anyone think Yabu Sally might make an appearance at a, uh, a Rico Hines run in the weeks to come? Because they're not over. And this tends to be the time of the year that the vets start to come out and they participate in some of these at the end of the offseason. So I'd be interested to see what he would look like there. I would imagine he would bully a few guys and put that on tape if he makes it out there to L.A. <laughs> 